Welcome to the Canine and Feline Behaviour Association. My name is Colin Tennant, the Chairman. I wish to give you a guide and an overview of what's involved in being a canine or feline behaviour practitioner in this organisation. It is open to all people of all ages, but especially those people with good life skills. In other words, dealing with people. It is a rewarding profession in more ways than one, offering a fantastic career prospects. Doubt, passion should be the basis for one wanting to enter this new career. A professional practitioner needs to understand the specific breed traits of cats and dogs and how these complex animals work in society with their pet owners. The feline discipline is mainly psychologically driven, having a good understanding of what makes cats tick. The feline discipline is primarily psychologically driven and such knowledge of the species is essential. This is addressed later in this film. In contrast to cats, dogs are a pack oriented animal, hence why they're so popular in Britain today. They love being around people. However, they too bring with them specific species behaviour. And as such, this in itself can bring problem behaviours when we don't fully understand what makes dogs tick. However, for most dog owners, they are a joy. We all, or we should all, enjoy dogs. Dogs also need a formal education and quite a strict education of training. They understand through obedience what they can and what they can't do. Dogs come under the law, the criminal law, especially the new Dangerous Dogs Act. Therefore, dogs and you as owners are responsible in public places. A dog cannot be allowed just to do as it wants, run across roads, perhaps cause accidents. You need to control a dog. Therefore, obedience training is critical to the dog's early development. Understanding this as a practitioner is important. Although as practitioners, we want to teach people to understand the dog's mind, the pack instinct, and how dogs interact with us, equally as important is the dog training. We need to understand the inherited drives that dogs bring into your home and separately the different individual breed drives. Dog breeds have modified how dogs think, their mind. So a breed like a husky is very different to that of a basset hound. They are the same species but they act in very different ways due to how they've been bred over hundreds of years. The practitioner needs to have a level of accredited academic study combined with vocational experience to be proficient and obtain a great knowledge of breed specific behaviours. However, many applicants bring to the CFBA quantitative experience, which we call vocational training. This too is valued and considered by a new applicant for the CFBA, whether that be feline behaviour or canine. Many applicants feel that understanding dog behaviour is all that they need to become a good practitioner. That's simply not enough. You have to be competent at training dogs and managing them. Let me give you an example. Aggression is the most common problem presented to canine behaviourists. So if you have a dog that's dog on dog aggression in public places or dog on person aggression, Eventually, when the modification programs are implemented, you will have to take the client in such places. The client will look to you for direction. They want you to lead by example. The ability to intercede quickly when things are starting to go wrong. This is the real world of dog behavior. You are in charge. And when you lead by example, and the client sees you take their dog and control it with strict obedience and bring that dog into order and the dog still has a happy temperament and is learning fast then the client's confidence improves 
they see that you can do it. That is not the same as you telling them what to do in a written report. That's the real world linked to dog behaviour and psychology. Experience in learning the handling skills of dogs is vital. Therefore, vocational knowledge is most important. Only when one has handled and managed the most aggressive dogs with serious behaviour problems and in quantity can you gain knowledge which is the foundation of this profession. If you cannot train or handle a dog that displays aggression to dogs and or people, how can you hope to lead by example? In essence, the most successful practitioners are the ones that do lead by example. The public, your clients, are always impressed when they see you get results. There is a risk in this profession. We have strict laws on dog behaviour, which makes our job more difficult when we're trying to rehabilitate dogs. We have to expose these dogs eventually, whatever training and behaviour programme they've been on, to the real world if we want these dogs to live in that environment. So there is risk. The way practitioners work varies a great deal depending on where their practice is located, the part of the country. Practitioners who work in cities will probably have slightly different systems and protocol to those who live in the country. Pet owners will often contact their veterinarian for a referral to see a CFBA full member. And this is mandatory for pet insurance cases. Many owners contact you through recommendation and that is a good sign of your success and professionalism. Once you've received a referral from a veterinary surgeon, the client will normally come to your centre if you have one. However, some practitioners work from home and only do home visits. The client explains the problem that they're presenting to you in detail. This we term information gathering trying to collate all the facts together of the problem presented to you. And once you've made the notes and the owner has presented their dog's problems to you in the way they want, they then will ask you to diagnose what you think is wrong with their dog or why their dog is exhibiting the behaviour it does. Now these can be straightforward or very complex. The time allowed can vary between one and a half and three hours. The average is about two hours. That again, the client sees you giving them first-hand advice on what equipment to use. It may be a head collar. It may be other equipment that you're suggesting they use in the home, like an indoor cage. Whatever equipment you want them to use, it is for you to set this down subsequently in a report. You may need to also demonstrate how to handle a difficult dog in a difficult situation. And when their dog becomes aggressive, you will often need stooge dogs to work with so the client can actually see what you're doing. It is virtually impossible for a client to understand what you're conveying from writing alone. In the thousands of consultations I've conducted, in each case where I show calming a dog down, the dog is aggressive, it's on its back legs, it's barking, it's aggressive. This is the norm for this dog with the client. If they can see me reduce this in 10 or 20 minutes by calmly showing them techniques, what to notice, when to intervene, when not to intervene, what equipment to use, that gives the clients great confidence that they too can achieve what the expert's achieving. This is how we learn. It's very important. Once the consultation is concluded, it's for you to explain to the client whether they will need to see you again, how that works, that they will receive a full written report explaining all that you've heard from them and your opinion of how they can solve their dog's problems. Once you set down the programs you want the client to follow in your report and from the demonstrations they've seen, you do need to keep in contact with the client. 
Now this can be by email or by phone. It's very important to maintain that contact. Feline consultations, by contrast, can be very different. Most cats do not travel well, so feline consultations will generally take place in the pet owner's home. This is the best place to see a cat. However, on occasion, there may be a reason why you want to see a cat at your centre. The Canine and Feline Behaviour Association through its sister organisation, the Cambridge Institute of Dog Behaviour and Training and Pet Behaviour generally. In this section you can find out what such a career has to offer, plus learning about the routes available to work, education and specific training courses that are available. Through accredited modules in the Cambridge Institute, we offer courses in canine behaviour and psychology. These also have workshops of one, two or four days and these are held each year in the United Kingdom. Many of our courses are distance learning so people could learn at home in their own time and at their own pace. We are inclusive. We want people to be able to study and in a relaxed way. We pride ourselves in having the best tutors in Britain in canine training, behaviour and psychology and feline psychology. All our tutors have to have a minimum of between 5 and 10 years full-time experience in the field. Go online for study choices and how to apply for a new career in either canine or feline behaviour. The Canine and Behaviour Association is a fantastic, modern, cutting-edge organisation. If you want to develop a career as a practitioner, do look at our website and all our courses. I wish you well in all your endeavours, whatever you choose.